Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of New Mutants number 30, which is an absolute monument to incompetence. Uh, so as usual, here's the Kindle. I actually did pay for it. Click that off since I can't read it. And then here's the pirate site where I actually read the motherfucker. Before we start, Jawbreakers Forever graphic novel, Ironsight 3 and Impossible Stars 2 combo campaign. The Perch did a video on this uh, a day or so ago, and I watched it last night. And at first I was like, you know, Perch is pretty mild-mannered. I feel like he's being a little bit over the top. Nope, nope, he was absolutely reviewing it the way, and he was like almost like legitimately angry during the video. So this is New Mutants 30 which celebrates 40 years of New Mutants and Deadpool. Except for New Mutants was created 40 years ago and Deadpool was created 32 years ago, but whatever, nothing matters. Uh, so we start off and it's uh, an entire page, an entire page of Vita Ayala talking to the reader. Now this is Vita's last issue. But at the end of it, she gets another full page. And they defaulted to anthologies because lesbians always default to anthologies. If you go to Kickstarter, there are so many lesbian anthologies. Why? Because there are no expectations for an anthology. All an anthology has to do to be successful is to just have different stories in it. That's it. And also in crowdfunding, if you make something an anthology, that means you maximize the amount of people who are working on it, which means you have more people to go beg to their parents and friends, oh, I got another Kickstarter. So the framing device is a party on the yacht of Roberto da Costa off the cosmic coast of Araco, which is Mars. I have read so many comics written by autistic lesbians over the last five years. So they love this kind of like manga humor where he's like yelling. So this is the joke. Roberto threw a party on a space yacht. And since it's a yacht, everyone showed up in their swimsuits. This is autistic lesbian humor 101. It's not just one or two panels of that. It's like about 10 different times they make that same joke. Roberto da Costa, of course, looks super gay. He looks like Vita Ayala, essentially. And uh, half the characters are gay because everyone's gay. So then we're out of the framing device and we're going back to the uh, New Mutants in their prime. Vita is so autistic that she has to over-explain their powers while not explaining them in any way that would be clear to anyone. You ask anyone what Sunspot's powers are, they say super strength. But she has to say... Solar radiation absorption, solar rechanneling, includes both radiation abilities and physical enhancements. He's super strong. He lifts up things and he's strong. Cannonball. Thermochemical energy field propulsion, nigh invulnerable when blasting. He flies and he's got a force field, but only when he's flying. You know that uh, belt that Danny Moonstar wears? Well, in this small panel, it got snapped while they were fighting in the danger room. And then in this teeny tiny panel, she says, oh, look what happened. And then she's arguing with uh, Roberto da Costa. And then in the middle of the night, a spooky stranger who can turn all black when his powers are activated. Who could it be? Sunspot. It's Sunspot. It's literally his power is to turn solid black when he's using his powers. It's Sunspot. So then she wakes up and her favorite belty is Gawney. And then she talks like a real human. My belt is a connection to my history and my family. It keeps my grandfather's memories close to me while I'm here, away from my mountains and my people. You saw yesterday that it broke because of Roberto. I think he took it because he was angry that I called him out on his recklessness. Where is he so I can confront him? What the fuck? Like, seriously, that this is fatal levels of lesbian autism to anyone except for autistic lesbians. Like, what the fuck? How does this pass an editor? So then they go looking for Roberto. So then she has a panic attack and causes 
panic attacks than everyone else. And then they meet their friends, and guess what? He did steal the belt. But it was to repair it, silly! This is the gift of the Magi for autistic lesbians. I know the last time we saw each other, things were rather... tense. And you are right, I did take your belt. But not for the reason you may think. Like you, I come from a very different place. We both chose to be here, away from home. And like you, I know what it is to feel disconnected from my... They all talk like Data from freaking Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm sorry that my actions led to it being damaged. They're besties frenzies now, Aziz. They're gonna have ice cream -sies. So then please look at the screen. And I need to point out that, um... That's not Vita Ayala. That's Robert DaCosta, who is somehow still straight after 40 years of publication by Marvel and two years of being written by Vita Ayala. Uh, there are five characters on this panel right here. Only one of them is straight and is drawn like Vita Ayala. For like the tenth time, they make the joke that it's a yacht party. Why did you people wear swimwear? So then we get uh, a flashback to um, Karma. Uh, when she was a basic bitch lesbian with a fake hair color and Shatterstar was wearing a belly shirt and they were at a music fair where uh, oh my gosh she fell in lesbians with a black lesbian how did their relationship start they danced together once and then they were very close emotionally so then she goes to find the love of her life who she's known for five minutes and oh my gosh she's gone and then we see that's just disturbing now please look at the screen because this is the actual writing. So her uh, black lesbian girlfriend, who she's now known for seven minutes, has disappeared into the forest with a man. And you know it's not voluntary. Because it's female in the Marvel Universe. Don't you dare touch me. Come on, I came out here for you. Funny because I distinctly remember telling you not to. I promise I'll make it good for you. And then we can put all this lesbian nonsense behind us. There is no us, Bradley. And then she's going to use her vaguely defined psi powers on a guy whose face we haven't even seen yet. She's confused, like all the other inverts here. She doesn't know what she needs, but I do. And I'm going to give it to her. BAM! Thanks for coming, but I had it covered. Come on, seriously, please look at the screen. What the fuck? So then, since it's a Vita Ayala written New Mutant story, there is a very strange apology. So she apologizes to the woman she's now known for nine minutes for going to rescue her from being raped. This is something you apologize for in the mind of Vita Ayala. Because when you go rescue a black woman from potentially being raped, you are diminishing her and her agency in the world. So, um, apologies for assuming you needed a rescue. It's fine. I find it kind of charming that you rushed out here all shiny night. And then we get this just... This is every Marvel comic now. Haha, <laughs> she loves her because the, the hearts is around her head. And then we get the final story, which is just pure autism. So now they're deciding that Warlock does not talk in that, you know, semi-code-based language he used to talk, where he would say, like, query before a question, but he now talks in emojis. Emojis that look like no emoji that has ever been seen on Earth. So he's talking to Doug, and he thinks Doug says that it's his birthday. Please look at the screen and realize that this is dialogue that Vita Ayala wrote for teenagers. Oh, um, sorry Warlock, but I can't hang out with you this morning. Well, there's a lot I have to do today to help prepare. Think of this as a Doug day. And then Robert DaCosta, who again, this is a flashback, so they are high school age, says, put some pep in your step, young Douglas. The day awaits us. So then because this is autism personified, the Doug emoji plus the sun emoji. So Rain decides that means birthday and they go out to buy birthday presents and the art looks like this. This is them celebrating 40 years. Celebrating celebrating. So then they finally figure out what to get for Doug. But it turns out it wasn't his birthday. It was a celebration of the first anniversary of them all meeting. And they are 
prancing around like autistic kindergartners? So then Rain and Warlock decide to give the birthday presents to each other. And then they hug while the rest of the new mutants do the world's shittiest rain dance. So we get another bit of the ha ha ha, why did everyone wear swimwear to the party? But uh, they actually go to the beach and Roberto da Costa cocks his hips like he's a woman. He literally has woman hips. Then Vita gets another entire page. I made the choice to step off the title because I feel very content with the stories I helped tell. They are incredibly meaningful to me, and my heart is very fulfilled. It's all about you, isn't it? Uh, can anyone name one thing that happened in the last two years in New Mutants? I've read, I don't know, maybe like four or five issues, maybe more. Uh, I know that um, Magic is the leader of the team, and she has a pretty cool sword. Also, there's just a lot, and I mean almost every issue had this weird forced apology where the person who did nothing wrong, like you tried to protect a black woman from being raped, and then you have to apologize that because that's how Vita's brain works. So now, since it's the 40th anniversary of the uh, OGN, original graphic novel, that launched the New Mutants, uh, we're going to hear from the people who made the comic for the last two years. None of the people who created it. Then we get uh, a preview of uh, Alyssa Wong writing Deadpool, and there's not a single joke. Let me read you the comedy dialogue. Ah, Krakoa. I love this place. There's really nothing like it. Exotic mutant beaches. Exotic mutant weather. Lying in the exotic mutant sunshine, getting exotic mutant sunburns. It, that's, that's it. That's, it's, it's all just like that shit. Literally. This is Lesbian Autism 101. It is absolutely drowning, specifically the X line, where it's basically mandatory to be gay if you want to write for any of the books. There's this uh, TikTok account I watch, and it's this tech guy who became homeless due to his alcoholism, and it is so heartbreaking. He'll disappear for a week at a time, then he's in a hospital, and he always has this, like, peppy attitude like hey things are gonna turn around and it's like no they're not like every week you're getting rolled you know you're waking up in the street you're getting free you know housing and then you're getting kicked out again because of your alcoholism like i'm sad to say things aren't gonna get better they're just gonna get worse and worse and you realize why al-anon exists al-anon is for people who are family of alcoholics because they have to go through this heartbreak of seeing something that they love slowly be destroyed by itself. So that's what it's like to uh, read a Marvel comic these days. Uh, we can have fun roasting them, you know, exaggerating. Oh, I'm so angry voice. But it's, it's, it's mainly sadness. It's, it's way more sadness than anger. So anyway, buy my book. Jawbreakers Forever graphic novel. Ironside 3 Impossible Stars 2 combo campaign. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.